Hey, hey, everybody, we are back. So excited to be here today. Guys, we have a really awesome guest. I know you probably heard this in the intro already, but this guy's coming at us clear from Israel. He decided to stay up late tonight, work later, just to give you guys this awesome experience. So hats off to him. Um, so this is Daniel Alphen. Um, and is that how you pronounce your last name? Is it Alphon or Alphen? Both work for me. Thank you, Josh. Okay, so I'm not I'm not saying it like a gringo. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> I'm so bad at pronouncing last names, if I'm being honest with you. My audience knows this. I'm constantly struggling with our the last names. The hardest one for me, though, was Mershaza Day. That one took me about 50, 50 attempts to get that one. Wow. Um, great episode, though, guys. Go check that one out. It's like episode 60. It's clear back there. Um, but, guys, very excited to have Daniel on here today with us. Daniel is a LinkedIn expert. Um, he's written the book on it, okay, on leveraging your profile, leveraging your LinkedIn to actually generate organic sales for your company. And most of you probably know this because I talk about this a lot, but this is actually one of our core strategies for scaling our company is using LinkedIn. And so, you know, we do LinkedIn outreach. We spend a lot of time messaging people and having great conversations, pulling them into our world. So I wanted to bring in Daniel because he's an expert in this and I wanted to hear kind of where he's at and how he does what he does. So first off, Daniel, I'm going to ask you more of a, uh, I don't know if psychological is the right word, but psychographic question for you, which is what was that moment for you when you realized I'm the LinkedIn God, man, I'm good at this and I should make a business on this. When was that moment for you? <laughs> if we skip the God part, then it was uh, 2006. Awesome. My, my wife, I look at my wife and I say, she's, she's divine, but I can't, yeah. uh, I can't say that about me. <laughs> <laughs> So back then I was uh, carrying a, a quota and I was a salesperson and LinkedIn simply helped me sl slash my sales cycle by seeing the name of the person I needed to reach out to within the organization. And then it helped me uh, beat my quota and I started helping friends. And probably two, three years later, 2006, seven, uh, I was um, doing 90% of my business was related to LinkedIn. And that was the moment wow. I decided to drop everything else and to specialize. That's amazing. You know, it's funny. Every person I talk to, they're never in the industry they thought they would be in. But that's the one that they were successful in. Right? I'm the same way. I never thought I'd be the podcasting guy ever. I started a podcast and I was not the first in the game. I was not hyper successful at it until all of a sudden I was. And people were like, how'd you do it? And it became my thing, right? Um, so, so Daniel, I'm, I'm excited about this in particular because most people, when they approach lead generation, the first thing that their minds do is say, I need to go run ads. And a lot of people right now, so this is being recorded in 2023, in 2023, a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm going to start running ads on LinkedIn because the targeting so much better. But you mentioned something before we started I thought was so interesting is you said, you don't actually believe that they should run ads until they have a good organic strategy on LinkedIn. Is that correct? Yes, you nailed it. Uh, I think advertising and paid advertising makes sense only after you um, explored and leverage the organic LinkedIn machine. And it's a very powerful machine, as you know. It's close to 1 billion members. And since we started this conversation, hundreds of people sign up. Every second, three people sign up. Wow. So basically starting with advertising is, is like being admitted to American Idol and say, no, I don't want to go on stage. Let me run the ad. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, it, so let's walk through like the anatomy of a really solid organic strategy because you know you, you mentioned like building your profile is messaging part of your strategy kind of walk us through a solid organic strategy excellent so the three uh, steps i would say is first build your linkedin presence and that would be first your individual profile and then your page your company page if you'd like and you ask yourself who's my ideal reader on linkedin for entrepreneurs or for, or for successful podcasters it would be business leaders or prospects. The second question is, if we could make those people visit your profile, Josh, what action would you like them to perform once they visit your profile? And lastly, are we making it as seamless and easy for them to understand why they need to get to that page or watch that video or go and, and sign up for your mastermind that will help them monetize their podcast? Who's your ideal reader? What action would you like them to perform? And are you making it as easy as possible for them to do? Yeah, that's amazing. And my, my curiosity with this is, um, I'm pulling up your website here as we're talking. Um, 
you, know, you you talk about basically what you just described is a a landing page. Like that's what your your LinkedIn page is. Yes, you got it. Because um, conversion is likely to happen on your website than on LinkedIn. If I go to uh, pantheonmastermind.com, then there you have a system. And as much as I love LinkedIn, LinkedIn is just a tool. So yeah. think about if you're an entrepreneur and you're a fifth generation entrepreneur then you should consider LinkedIn as an extension of your website that needs right. to convert your ideal reader and not a, a repository for your CV because no, no podcaster cares about the exact year you started Versi Marketing. They right. want to know that you can help them. And by looking and visiting your profile, they see it from the word go. They see the, the banner, they see the headline, and they see the featured elements. All those are free to use. It takes a couple of minutes. Just look at your profile and, and see if that converts. If you were your ideal uh, prospect, would you convert? Right. And if you say, no, I wouldn't, then it's time to go and start building a customer-centric and a customer-ready presence on LinkedIn. That was stage number one. Stage number two is your connection strategy. And stage number three would be your lead generation. Right. Well, so, you know, it's funny as, as we're even having this discussion, I was like pantheonmastermind.com. That's like our old website. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. That's like I probably need to update my LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to make a note of that. Go update that link. Um, Sorry. No, no, that's okay. I, I appreciate you mentioning it. It's good. I like being humiliated on camera. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. So, so, Okay, this is this is great because you're starting with a profile, and so what I'm hearing from you is is it's about attracting, like helping them see kind of your story. It's painting the story of you, um, but then at what point are you like reaching out to them? Like, like, how are you getting them to come to the page? Is it simply by having a good page, or are you? Is it a content strategy? Is it an outreach strategy? Is it ads? What do you recommend? Okay, so the simple hack would be to visit people's profile, being public. In other words, if your ideal reader is a podcaster who wants to grow their podcast and monetize it in a good way, and that's a specialty of yours, then simply visiting uh, 10 or 15 successful podcasters' profiles on LinkedIn and being public, would, you, would, you would have a high viewback rate. Many of them will check you out because not you, but most people are very curious to, to see who visited them on LinkedIn. And there, there, there would be one click away from going to your LinkedIn profile, and there you can show them the way to your mastermind or to joshav.com or to any any program you'd like them to have a look at. Yeah. So, awesome. so visiting profiles is, is one simple way to do it. And if you um, connect with people you know well, then one of the hidden uh, strategy or, or uh, strategies that is less used is simply to run an advanced search and to identify one ideal customer or ideal prospect of yours, and then leaving the LinkedIn platform, communicating with your shared your mutual connection. So you would focus on secondary contacts and you would ask that person, can you introduce me to my ideal prospect? Say I wanted to be introduced to Tyler Tapp and I would see that you're our mutual connection. And I would ask you, can you introduce me to your brother? And if you say yes, then the conversation would take place outside of LinkedIn. And I would get your brother's attention, not thanks to my name, because it's meaningless. It would be thanks to your name. Right. That's awesome. And so, I mean, this this is honestly a great, what I would consider a hunting strategy, right? Where you can... Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to repeat back to what I'm hearing. So it's it's visiting people's profiles because it, it kind of cues them that you visited their profile and then that kind of brings them back to yours. Um, you have, you said like do an event search, you're finding people who are a good fit and then you're saying, hey, who are the people that um, uh, that you're mutually connected with and you ask them for an introduction, yes? Yes, sir. See, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, it's funny. We've We've actually never even used that strategy. I mean, ours is a simple like, we use LinkedIn Sales Navigator and we outreach directly. <laughs> okay, so, so, so let's say this. Um, some of our listeners have 15,000 uh, followers like you have, but most of them don't have that. Right. So if you, your tribe is small, if you have a few hundred connections or 1,000, 2,000, then it doesn't make sense. The content alone will not drive enough traffic to your profile. 
Right. However, the more connections you have, the more it's, it makes sense to focus on the, the content I've, I've found to work best is top of the funnel, evergreen content that your ideal prospect is worried about. Hmm. And it wouldn't be salesy. It would be educational. So why should I start a podcast? Or how do I monetize my podcast? Or how do I find the right guest? Or, or now that I started my podcast, I see that it takes me too much time. How do I scale it? If you could tap into their mind and identify, and you can do it in your sleep, identify the questions that they struggle with simply by showing them that you know you've been there and you can help and guide them, you would start by providing value. And once they get value from Josh, they would move from step A to step B. And they would ask you, what would be the next step, Josh? So you don't have to sell. They want to buy. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's funny. I'm like... I'm hearing you and going, that's, that's happened to us a lot of times where people will reach out. I'm like, oh, maybe it's because of that. I mean, they're reaching out to us because they're like, I've been watching your stuff. I've seen your content. I've been deep diving your profile. Um, you know what I love about this though? You're not going to get kicked off LinkedIn for like visiting people's profiles too often. I mean, you can be sitting there. If you're bored, you're like sitting on the toilet for crying out loud. You could just be like visiting people's <laughs> profiles, right? It's brilliant. I love it. Um, so I, I want to ask you this question because I get this a lot. What's what's your take on automations? So automating the outreach or using Sales Navigator to generate lists and then you know having a system that you use to begin conversations. Like wh what's your belief on those? Uh, again, if we focus on entrepreneurs uh, that use LinkedIn organically, then I would I would advise them not to use any automation at all, simply because LinkedIn will crack down on those automations and they might uh, um, either uh, close or, or restrict your account or or completely ban you from the LinkedIn platform. So it, 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 it comes with a price and it's not really good for your brand because if you're sending 10,000 uh, messages and, and very few people get back to you, then your brand is not associated with the value you would like people to think about it. The fact that it's, it's possible doesn't make it a good strategy for all people. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I would believe that as well because I've seen a lot of people will, will chase that um, – that perfect automation and they're trying to game the system. You know, we our our big thing is, you know, our, our LinkedIn out, our outreach strategy is to basically pull lists of people through sales navigator, which that's mm -hmm. a paid service. You pay to get these lists mm -hmm. of the dream client. We get that list and um, we just build a genuine message to that person saying, Hey, you mm -hmm. know, saw this content you're doing. Um, saw you don't have a podcast. Have you thought about starting one? Right it's such an easy in because we're being a lot it's basically scripted but it allows us to actually build value around it we've never been blocked mm -hmm. on linkedin using that strategy mm -hmm. even though it's basically scripted but it gives us an opportunity to be human as well because it seems like they they reward that <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and even if the linkedin algorithm doesn't reward that then the human reader does reward it so right. basically if, if if by receiving your message i can read it and say hey Josh has thought about us for a second. He has, as he has actually read my profile, it makes you stand out from 99% of LinkedIn users or LinkedIn automation. Right. That's amazing. Well, so out of curiosity on this with you, where, yep. where do you like to, because I mean, you've had a lot of clients that you've worked with on LinkedIn and yes. help them build profiles and, and generate leads through it. Where do you recommend they start as far as finding the lists? Uh, because you talked about you know, identifying that person who, like the dream client, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, the mm -hmm. avatar. There's like 5,000 different names for it, your ICP. Mm -hmm. How are you helping them identify these lists of people and finding gathering areas on LinkedIn? Like, How are you finding them? If you have a good uh, image of, of your ideal prospect, then referrals could become a very significant source of revenue because referrals are warmer. They come almost pre-sold. And if someone recommends you after they've worked with you, then they tend to be a lot less price sensitive. They can stay with you longer and they can end up by referring other clients your way. So asking for uh, referrals is uh, difficult for some entrepreneurs. 
I was listening to uh, an episode released with Greg Stevens, and yeah. I wanted to, to quote that, to, to quote your conversation, if I may. Yeah, please do. He said, it's going to be uncomfortable, but you get to choose for how long. It can be 20 minutes or it could be two months. So asking for that referral or that recommendation can be awkward for five minutes. But if, it, if 30% of your revenues came through referrals, then you would be able to help those people and to grow your business in an organic way. And it probably referrals is the um, single most important strategy that many entrepreneurs overlook. Yeah, It's not the only one, but it should be one of the first ones you play with. If you don't have a lot of resources, if you don't have a lot of content, this could work for even bootstrapping entrepreneurs. Yeah. Gosh, that's amazing. You know, it's funny. I, I um, even just hearing you say that back from the interview, just reminding me like, wow, that, that is such an important thing to think about, you know, of, of five minutes of, dis it's, I mean, it's 30 seconds of discomfort for really building a, building something solid. I, I know with our company, we've been able to generate millions through referrals, uh, literally. I mean, people are so willing to give when, when you're providing real value and mm -hmm. they know that you can like, like, like I, I know I can send somebody to Daniel. I wouldn't have him on the show if I didn't think I could. I, I can send somebody to you and I know confidently they're going to be taken care of. Right. And I'm going to give my, my solid pitch here for everybody. This is my shameless plug for Daniel. Go check out danielalfon.com, A L F O N. Um, that's where he's, you can go hire him. Right. Amazing guy. So, anyways, back, back to the show here. Um, but I, what I can tell you guys is that even for myself, knowing that I, I can refer to him also makes me look better as the referrer because, because I know they're going to get such a great results with Daniel that that they'll come back and buy my service because like, wow, Daniel did amazing at your your referral. What do you do? Who else could you refer me to? Right? Really awesome. I love this. This plays right into our strategy. And I'm sitting here going, I had to go back to my LinkedIn strategy. It's been way too long. I miss LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn misses you. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> um, we've uh, we helped them a lot, uh, get a lot of exposure at the beginning. Uh, do you know uh, Josh Steinle by chance, Daniel? I know, I know of him. Yes, so I've, I've started following Josh maybe three, four years ago uh, about uh, being an author and using LinkedIn. I think that was the angle I remember. Yeah, well, he has his. He was one of our first guests on this um, mm -hmm. show, actually, back in 2018, 2019 is when we started this one. Anyways. Um, he was one of the guys that kind of kicked me on to, it's like I was already using LinkedIn, but he helped me realize like how he kicked me onto the, the concept of articles. And I'm kind mm. of curious, how do articles play a, a pretty key role in your strategy? Like, like actually building thought leadership content that way, or is that unnecessary? Excellent. So, so if thought leadership is important for you, if you run an agency or if you're a coach, then thought leadership should be part of your long-term objectives. And where, where would you find a better place in the world's best and most uh, um, important business community? And if you think about your content strategy, then the way you could use articles is to build or strengthen your thought leadership. In other words, not a time-sensitive uh, webinar you run tomorrow morning, but something that would analyze trends. For example, you could... Uh, going back to, to the uh, podcasters who want to run a successful or monetized podcast, some of the content may change. Perhaps the technical gear could change. But the questions, the strategic questions, would remain true in six months' time. And right. when you think about the articles you can write, then think about them as long-term, timeless, evergreen content that would make people understand why they need to go to joshamp.com and jump on a call with you. Yeah, that's amazing. I, yeah, it's so interesting. P.S. My wife keeps making fun of me because I say that's amazing so often on this show. So shout out to Kinsey for making me feel <laughs> awkward on my podcast. Um, but you get everybody interviews awesome and everything they say is awesome. Um, she's blushing right now because I know she's listening to it. Um, love you, babe. So Daniel, 
this this is fantastic um and i hope people will look at this and go okay this is a strategy that i could employ um very very interesting strategy but i i want to just give one final shout out so everybody go check out daniel alfon.com a l f o n um go hire this guy he's got a really awesome master class that he does it's very cost effective first off a great way for you to get into this even if you're like if you're one of the people out there who says you know i'm i don't have a lot of cash to put at something this is one of the first places I would put cash is in something like this because an organic strategy is the foundation for all paid and other strategies that you do. And truthfully, I am such a, I am an avid believer that LinkedIn is one of the easiest places to become a thought leader because people actively search for you on there. They, they seek thought leadership on LinkedIn. So Daniel, I wanna ask you one final question to kind of wrap this up. Can you give our audience one solid tactic they can go use today, take a few minutes of their time, to become more successful on LinkedIn to either A, generate more leads, or B, to generate more reach with their content. Excellent, so the tactic I would uh, uh, recommend is this. Ask someone to look you up on LinkedIn, ideally someone you're not connected with on LinkedIn, and then ask them what they would do when they visit your own profile. And Josh, in some cases, you would be amazed to see what people do, because you, crafted your profile in a certain way and you're sure that people are going to click here but you see that that person doesn't click there they tap they scroll they do something else or they stop and ask hey when you say this what do you mean by that and it's very tempting to answer their question but if that person could be a prospect of yours then you need to get back to the drawing board and say how can i streamline my profile so it's clear for everyone to understand how I'm part of the solution. And this could be a, a simple free strategy to pick 10 minutes for someone's brain and not to guide them. Not to say, if you click here, then you would check my mastermind. Just look at them. And if it's a Zoom call, ask them to share the, the screen or if they use the app, try to, to screen, to, um, I'm sorry, to stream the, uh, the app itself and see what action they perform. And for example, if they click on your contact info and if you notice that one of the link there is, is not the ideal link you'd like them to, to go to, then you thank that person, you go back to your LinkedIn profile and you rebuild it or update it so it makes sense for your future customer. There, there was a reason it was there, but every now and then it makes sense for you to look at it and say, is this serving me properly for the next six months? 